All right, in this video, I want to talk about the odds that you've been through hell and back. You saw the title, 90% chance that if this resonates with you that you've been through hell and back. While I'm going to go over, it's actually a little bit more than 10 things. I know in the thumbnail I wrote 10. It's a little, a little more than uh, 10 things. In this video a couple days ago, I saw somebody talk about this, and I thought it was an interesting topic, so I wanted to kind of cover my thoughts on the slides that he had had in his video. So I'm going to show those little slides. I'm going to go over a couple of things. Now, while it, this video will kind of point out what you might be going through, it is not going to kind of tell you what to do about it. I would like to do that in a future video. Hopefully, if I can find enough information, I have been looking. I actually have a bunch of notes that, written down here to make a kind of a follow-up video about this. But I wanted to kind of just get the message out there just because a lot of us are going through a lot, especially when I look at the DMs and stuff like that from people. I'm like, man, I'm not the only one going through this. So without further ado, let's get into the video. I did go out on site and kind of have some fun with that. So let's get started. Their inability to ask for help and tackling everything on their own. They're used to no one else being there and still needing to get shit done. Now, again, just with everything else, this could be perceived. This could be real. This could be perceived. You really don't know. Um, you know, even to yourself, like you kind of convince yourself of certain things, but this is definitely a huge, huge marker. And none of these things are like, in any particular order, really. It, it's just the order that I kind of found them in, and it's the order I believe that it's on this other video. A lack of trust in most people, often dismissed as just maybe a cynic, but probably uh, stems from the lifetime of betrayal, maybe as an early, chi early in childhood. Now this one, I think this one hits the hardest, well, maybe not hardest of all of these, but it really, once you lost trust in everything, you know, it really becomes an issue and it makes it hard to have friendships or any kind of relationships with anybody really. And if this resonates with you, know, you know, and you feel like talking about it, leave it down in the comments section. All these things. You know, some of these, you know, are just, you know, when you don't trust anybody, it's really rough. I think, I feel like the, those of us who grew up in the city might know that know more about this, but I really don't know because I've only lived in like rural areas. Well, I've never lived in a rural area, but like out of town areas, you know, for a little while of my life. So I really can't speak to that, but it's a huge one. There are a lot of negative responses here, which is completely understandable. But I do want to add a positive sign of someone who's been uh, seen, seen some things. They can be incredibly emp uh, empathetic and uh, patient, willing to listen with an open mind and emit a warmth uh, from them that seems to say, I feel your pain and your heart, uh, sorry, and my heart is with you. Coming out of painful part of life can really help a person understand why other people are the way they are, the people are the way they are, <clears throat> because they know what pain does to them. I think this one's probably the most positive of this whole thing, honestly, because yes, but it can be a negative too, because when you understand other people's pain, you know, you kind of give them maybe more leeway than you should. I don't know. Maybe, uh, you know, that could be a, a negative, that could be a positive, but if those people don't do it for you, then that leaves you feel em empty. And that kind of goes into the one that I just talked about is the trust issues. Because if you keep doing this for others and they don't do it back for you, then you might start having trust issues and that's going to lead into just more and more, just not talking to anybody, just not having people around, just isolating yourself. And that's, that's an issue. So it, while it, yes, it can be a positive, it can also be a negative. Um, but I do try to look at things as a positive because why not, right? This thing is so dead. <sighs> anyway, next one. Disproportionate reactions. The reactions to most things are normal or even low key, but occasionally they have a huge response to something minor. Key sign of trauma. This one. This one is so ridiculous. I've been through this so many times. The things that nobody else would react to. I have these crazy reactions to it and I'm like, here we go again. And I kind of just watch it happen, unfortunately, because I don't know what to, do. sometimes I don't know what's happening until it's all done. Now I've never done anything crazy or hurt anybody, 
but like sometimes I'll just feel like somebody's legit just trying to hurt me for no reason and I will kind of lash out you know not lash out but just respond in a way that makes it feel like they were trying to attack me or hurt me in some way and the reality is they really weren't trying to do that it was just my perceived notion of this and that it sucks too because you're like and then you apologize but how many times do you do this before somebody's like well this person's a lunatic when you're really not you're just trying to deal with the brain that you have the best way that you can and sometimes that just isn't understandable by others but maybe by watching videos like this hopefully i'm in the shot i didn't even remember to flip the screen around um Hopefully videos like this might help you understand where other people are coming from. You know, I don't know. I really don't know. But for those of us who are going through this, at least you can see that other people understand what you're going through. And it may help you from there. I don't know. I'm with my friend uh, Campbell here who started the soup company. All right, I work with parents and children who have endured and some regularly still enduring trauma. One thing I notice in times of serious immediate stress like an active shooter nearby as a, a, a real example, they go into a total calm, rational state. Their brains seem to uh, be trained to be more comfortable in chaos. They also seem to create often uh, create chaos, often drama, when things start going too smoothly. A lot of people see this as self-sabotage, but if you're uh, used to living in chaos, calm can feel really unfamiliar and frankly scary. This one, Yes, I mean, example of this. I was in a house one time that was struck by lightning. Well, it wasn't struck by lightning. The transformer behind the house was struck by lightning. It was attached to a metal fence. The metal, metal fence was attached to the house. The house was electrified. And for whatever reason, it was really calm for me. I've also been in a tornado and it was really calm for me. I've been in some crazy situations in, in just different areas of the world and it was calm for me. And then all of a sudden everything's normal and I get fidgety and I can't handle it. It's gotten a lot better lately, but this one, this one resonated with me a lot just because, I mean, the ridiculousness of the whole thing, right? You, you're trying to have a normal life and you're trying to be with a person that claims to be normal and then all of a sudden they <laughs> see you go through this and they're like, well, what is this? And then they can't handle it. It's really unfortunate. I'm, I'm most of this time I'm talking about like relationships with this stuff because you understand it, the viewer, but the person who doesn't understand it is the person trying to be with you in whatever manner or even, even at work. It really doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter what the situation. It's just an unfortunate one, right? Because you try your hardest. Nothing uh, surprises them anymore. This is a big one. Not many people have been in that deep, dark place. But if you have, it almost kills your soul. You couldn't even describe it to someone who, has, uh, who hasn't experienced it. If you're in a state or you've managed to get out, most things in life seem pretty trivial. A uh, stranger uh, was, like, stranger was being rude. Someone cut you off in traffic just got a promotion at work it will all seem uh, completely useless compared to what you you've been th going through or what you've been through perfect example of this i was in a car one time with my ex-wife and there was this truck in front of us who had a bunch of carpets in the truck i, I was driving right and all of a sudden the carpet one of the carpets went flying off of the truck and it hit my car and it dropped my car going from 65 mile an hour down to 20 miles an hour and then it flew off my car and it flew into somebody else's and my ex-wife who was my fiance at the time um freaked out right she absolutely freaked out and she got mad at me because i didn't it didn't bother me at all you like i didn't even i didn't even pay it any attention it's just situations like that that really, you know, like other people are like, why is this, why is he going through this? Or another example, I've been to, I'm in a cemetery right now. I can't even tell you how many funerals I've been to over my life. And they don't phase me at all. 
right? Going to a funeral doesn't phase me whatsoever. Being at a cemetery doesn't phase me whatsoever. Leaning on a grave doesn't phase me. And other people, you know, I've actually had people get mad at me because I wasn't appropriately grieving at a funeral. Like I wasn't crying like everybody else was. I wasn't, you know, doing everything. Meanwhile, I've, I, I don't even know how many funerals I've been to. You know, maybe they haven't been to that, that many funerals or maybe, I don't know, a, a lot of my family has lived that charm life. And I'm not saying that I've had a terrible life. I think a lot of my trauma is perceived. Um, but what can you do about that situation? And yeah, so it's just, if this resonates again with you, leave it down in the comment section down below. Hopefully the scenery has done you some good. One small thing I noticed is how people handle their per, uh, personal space. It might sound odd, but someone who's been through a lot often has a certain way of arranging their things or how they react uh, being around others. For instance, a slightly guarded or meticulous approach to organizing personal items or a tendency to stay quiet in the background or can be subtle hints. It's like these uh, small details are a part of the coping mechanism or a reflection of their experiences. It's a gentle reminder that we all carry our stories uh, with us in ways that aren't always immediately obvious. I think a lot of us, even of people who haven't been through tra traumatic experiences, have probably been through this. You know, like uh, my house really is pretty barren. I, I think that's kind of, kind of one of the signs of this. I, I don't really keep a lot of stuff around, uh, but this one, I don't know. I don't know how much I relate to this one other than the fact that like if you're talking to me in real life and we're standing and like if we're not intimately related, you know, and you get closer to me, I usually will back up the equal amount of space that you get closer to me. So if you walk like two inches toward me, I'll probably back up by two inches. I don't do it on purpose. When I worked at the, the fish place, the, uh, the food distribution place, that woman used to crack up. I think it kind of hurt her feelings a little. She tried not to have it hurt her feelings. And I'm like, I don't do this on purpose. But every time she would get closer to me, I would move back. And it wasn't just her, it's everybody. But she's the one that really pointed it out. So maybe that's an example that you can kind of go by with this one. But yeah, that's something that we deal with. I wonder if these berries are edible. Is it in focus? Probably not. I'm guessing no. Probably not. All right, I've lost so much weight, you can probably barely, barely see me back here. Bad at day-to-day -day life, but extremely good in an emergency situation. Jesus, yes. You know, this really irritates me. I'm reading this one. I was over here in the thorn bushes. It related to Jesus. Jesus is mentioned in this, and the record wasn't working. Damn this camera. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell? I finally had a funny scene here in thorn bushes with these berries over here attacking me and it wasn't recorded. That's the story of my life. Uh, let's do this again. A bad day-to-day -day life, but extremely good in an emergency situation. Jesus, yes, I was diagnosed with complex PTSD recently and after five hours of being questioned about it, no, so, sorry, about my life, my entire life story, I swear, I swear I can read. Uh, my entire life story by the psychiatrist, I realized that most people don't have lives like I've had. You run on fight or flight constantly. So when an actual emergency pops up, you just become calm and are totally in your zone. <clears throat> Being able to function with fight or flight does apply, uh, doesn't apply, it's so, so difficult. Put me in chaos and certainly in crisis and I thrive, messed up. I can, uh, I can relate to this, I can relate to this. I think a lot of people can relate to this one though, maybe. Or maybe I just kind of have the weirdos uh, contact me. All right, you can't tell me this place isn't magical. Look at this. There's some like magical like blueberries around here. All right, so this one of all of them, I think I resonate with really highly. They are able to read uh, people. They run through countless scenarios and predict people's reactions and behaviors. Ultimately, they don't get mad or disappointed by others because they saw it coming. Occasionally, if something really hurts, they may feel a little tired or even relieved. For the most part, they've shut down emotionally, but every once in a while, in a great while, they think maybe this person will prove me wrong. I can relate to this 100%. And it's even more so, like if I go out, I have not flipped that screen again. I don't know if I'm in the shot. What is wrong with me? Never used a camera before. Um, 
I, I, I read, and not only do I read people, read the room, but like everywhere I go, like right now I'm out in the middle of nature, just because if I was shooting this out like downtown or in the city or something like that, I would read everybody that walked past me and it gets exhausting. It gets exhausting. And that's why a lot of us are tired because we read every situation, every person, talk to every person we talk to, we read every scenario just so we're prepared. And I, I gotta show you these, these blue, f I don't know what these things are. Something's walking in here. What are you? I don't know what it is. It's an animal of some kind. Maybe it's a panther. Man, these are cool looking. What the hell did that just do? Are you going to focus? Probably not. I was vindicated. Here they are. Oh, it's working. Imagine that. Next. It's impossible to describe to someone what has to be earned through uh, lived experiences. I've been able to sense the, the way people move, think, and feel since I was young. Not, not because I'm projecting my wants onto them as uh, some claiming to be empathetic commonly do. It's instead a measure of their aggression, their resentment, and their malice. You can feel the snark and growl in their voices. You can almost touch the uh, per persuasive, pervasive <laughs> feeling of contempt uh, they put out. You recognize it Oh my gosh, this is, this is why I don't read on uh, devices. I cannot read this. These people, uh, you can feel the snark and growl in their voices. You can almost touch the pervasive feelings of contempt they put out. You recognize it or you suffer greatly. There are always consequences. Those, these people infect the fabric of the social environment. They warp and they control how people talk, to, uh, talk and feel and often interrogate more, uh, more like themselves more like themselves into positions of esteem. Questioning them becomes taboo and confrontation is met with immediate anger and the compulsive need to socially purge the unquiet from their environment. It's cultish and it creeps up on a community. I don't know if I understand this one. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it at that. I don't think I understood that English. English. But it could be true. Or maybe I have it so bad I don't even recognize it. I was bartending one night and served the older, this older couple with a smile. They were really nice and didn't think I was actually any different, even though I was going through a lot at the time. The old lady looked at me after I, was ca after I had cashed them out and said, you have a really sad look in your eyes. It's going to get better. She could tell I was going through something just by looking in my eyes. And I don't know what the rest is because I cut it off. I think a lot of us wear it in different ways, um, but the eyes are definitely a good indicator. This one, you know, I, this is just a statement and I'm down here by a pond. Oh, once again, I can't see anything. Hopefully I'm in focus. Releasing the shot. All right, so here starts uh, one of a 10 part series. Disproportionate reactions, their reactions to most things are normal or even low key, but occasionally they have a huge response to something or minor, uh, or, or huge response to something minor, key sign of trauma. When you see someone deal with something extremely emotionally damaging or physically painful and they act like they don't even notice, notice it, it like nothing's changed. When you see uh, that you know that they've seen the worst and nothing is gonna uh, get to them. The the maturity with which they handle unexpected events when shit goes down, they know what to do. Not trusting people, you uh, <clears throat> not trusting people. You could be friends for years and think you're uh, you're close, but in fact you don't have the slightest idea what's going on in their lives. They could be uh, staying up all night, being depressed, and tomorrow morning say hello to someone with a smile on their faces. Uh, they simply don't trust any trust people anymore no matter what they do or don't do here's the thing like almost everybody i know and this is unfortunate and this is my fault but everybody almost everybody even the people even the person i've known since 1986 a lot of times he's like i don't even know like what you're going through or, or, or anything like that because you don't tell anybody anything and i don't do it intentionally it's not like something i set out intentionally and do 
But a lot of times when I do tell people what I'm going through, there's no reaction at all. Or like when there's something that I really am happy about, like I sent pictures of uh, food that my dad grew to my dad the other day and he didn't really care about it at all. And I'm like, it drives me crazy. It drives me crazy. Like I put all this effort into the lighting and setup and all that kind of stuff. A stuff he grew, I get no response. And so, so this is why I just don't, don't talk to people. I'm not saying my parents are bad people by any means. They're, they're, they've helped me out through my whole life because uh, I've had a lot of weird situations happening. But I don't know, that reaction. And, and just I get so many reactions like that. Like, and then stuff that I'll say, like it's even like the videos on here. Like this video might tank, who knows? And I put a lot of effort into it. And the other one where I'm just complaining about something eating a potato while eating a potato, I'll get, you know, like a lot of views. So it's just, you just never know. Here's the second part of that. They have advice, good advice for people who have been, uh, who've uh, just experienced trauma or for how to handle oddly specific and fucked up situations. Just got thorned. Uh, super in independent because they learn not to rely on anybody uh, when nothing shocks them. Preparation. Most people who've dealt with horrendous situations now prepare for the proverbial worst. Honestly, em uh, empathy and understanding. Many have heightened uh, senses of, of um, uh, empathy naturally, but oftentimes the people who uh, really care for others sh uh, shows me that they themselves have, have really needed it at some point, 100%. People who have been through some shit are reading these replies, and I did it again, I cut myself off. So I don't know what the last part is, but I'll put it in here, hopefully. Maybe not. Yes to all this. I, this is self-explanatory. I don't even know how to add to it, so I'm gonna just move on to the next one. So to my favorite part of this park. Get excited for it. That's right. So picnic table in the middle of nowhere is my favorite part of the park. Not that I've ever eaten here before. Maybe I should. They walk silently and unintentionally. Scare other people when they finally see them. I had this happen uh, the other day at the grocery store. I was uh, shopping at, uh, and a worker suddenly appeared beside me. Never heard them coming and I jumped. He muttered sorry and kept walking as if he's uh, used to this interaction. I feel so bad I, uh, because I, I do the same thing. From years of childhood trauma, I hope he's uh, doing okay otherwise. Walking without making noise is a learned behavior, usually in response to long childhood trauma, whether it be an attempt to hide from threats in the house or to avoid getting reprimanded by the parents who can't stand the noise of their own children, or many other reasons. In many cases, this habit uh, carries in adulthood even long after the original threat is gone this has been true in my case i go through this too myself and uh, i'm actually just now getting my posture correct if you guys see me like with different postures in my videos i'm finally getting myself back to a place where i'm actually walking vertically like you're supposed to i realized and i think a lot of my weight issues is because my body has been so out of place and there's so much lack of drainage in my body and I've also been, I, you guys have probably seen like some of the hairs missing up here. This is from the keto days. My barber said it's coming back like crazy because I finally got my vitamin D kind of a, at a normal level. I've just been working on a lot of stuff that I've been going through through the years. And so this one really makes a lot of sense to me. I said to somebody the other day and they were cracking up. I'm like a, like a ninja or something like that and I can sneak up on people. Anyway, hopefully this uh, resonated with you guys. Uh, it's, it's been a lot of fun for me. All right, hopefully this video did some good for you. Uh, kind of pointed some things out, made it uh, a little bit more relatable. Uh, the, the thing is, is if you go through this, maybe show this video to somebody that you know that's like, man, I can't deal with this person. It may not change their mind, but it might give them a little bit of an idea of what you go through, how you go through it, when you go through it and the reasons kind of that you do what you do, right? The reasons that you do what you do and the reasons that cause them. And it might actually not even be for other people. This may actually be something that, that you watch and you're like, wow, you know, I really go through this. I really resonate with this. Um, what can I do about that? What can I do to change some of the things that I go through? 
and yada, yada, yada. So that's how the conversation starts. I would like to make another video about that. But in the meantime, I'm going to post uh, one of my l latest videos up here. Go check that out. Subscribe to the channel if you'd like. If you think it would do you any good. Uh, like, subscribe. Like always. Uh, comments, questions. What do you think about this topic? Down below. And I'll talk to you in the next video. Peace.